Welcome everyone to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and today we're going to be going through the new, um, what is this thing called? The, um, Dread Warlord Cartel Pack. So basically Bioware is doing a new thing now where before they release a Cartel Pack, actually well before, uh, they're going to be putting that Cartel Pack available in your collection. So that means two things. On one hand, as you guys will see in this video, uh, when I'm doing these pack preview videos, now I can actually preview what the items look like on the characters and see all the different uh, flashy animations and effects that can occur, uh, especially with the weapons. And the second main thing is also now that they've added the pack to collections before it's even released, you can actually get these items out of Grand Chance Cubes. So it's a little bit more of an incentive, I guess, to open Grand Chance Cubes. And it was confirmed by Musco on the forums, which means it's definitely not an exploit or anything. It, it is intended. So you could potentially, if you open a Grand Chance Cube, get super lucky and get one of these armor sets or weapons out of it. And... Um, uh, to do, you can either do two things with it, right? One, you could wear it on the fleet and show off because you're probably one of the first people in the game to actually get this. And the second thing is uh, you could obviously try to sell it for insane prices on the GTN and get really lucky with a, with a good sale there. But anyways, the point is that uh, we do have the new cartel pack now available to preview and it looks like there are actually some really, really nice stuff in here. So let's get right into it. So remember that with the new changes that happened to cartel packs, we're now only going to be seeing very few items and definitely none of the bronze stuff. And surprisingly enough, we are getting some actually really high quality items, even for a silver rarities. But starting with the gold armor sets, we actually have two gold armor sets this time. Uh, firstly, we have the Tythian Disciples armor set. Now this one is probably one of the most... Uh, anticipated ones. I mean, when it was data mine, that was the one I was definitely most excited about. I'm. It's unfortunate to say I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, the design is obviously very cool. It's unique. Uh, when you look at this armor set, you definitely see Tithe in it, right? It's a miniature version of how the the god looks himself. But the point is, it's not really. Um, I don't know, flashy enough in my opinion. Like, when you look at just the image, uh, it looks really cool. It looks like you have all these cool effects happening. When you look at the actual armor just in game, I'm hoping maybe like it has some sort of effect associated with it, but that's not what it's saying in the description. It's still nice nonetheless. I can definitely see why it's gold. I guess I just had my expectations a little bit too high because I thought they were going to do something really cool with it. But um, that is how it looks. Let me know what you guys think. It, it's good. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it, it just could have been better, I guess. The second gold armor set is the Gifted Shadows armor set. Now this one I actually initially thought was going to be silver, but uh, d they decided to make it gold rarity. I can see why. The upper body armor is definitely very, very nice. Uh, the helmet, I'm not too crazy about that. I mean, um, I think definitely the main part about this is the upper body armor because it looks very nice and refined. Uh, it's got some really nice color and ornamentation going on, so it definitely looks very, very good. I can see why they decided to make that gold. Um, so some very nice gold armor sets there. Going on to the silver armor set, we only have one this time around, which means if you're opening a cartel pack, you're going to be getting a lot of this one. I see Distinguished Warden's armor set. Um, not too crazy about this one, honestly. Uh, it looks very, um, I'm not going to say a reskin. I can't really pinpoint what, it, what, what that would be a reskin of, but it's just not very nice in general. The upper body armor is okay, I guess. The helmet just does not appeal to me whatsoever, and I couldn't care less about any of the other parts of the armor set. So... Yeah, not the best, but at least we got good gold armor sets. Um, going on into the um, mounts now, we have two gold and two silver mounts, so we'll get the gold done first. Firstly, we have the Kukri Intimidator AN21. Now, this one is going off one of those pod racer type of designs. Uh, we have quite a few of them in game, so it's not really that unique, but the design is definitely very different. Uh, we have really cheap pod racers right now, like we have the Sinar, which is a silver mount that sells for like 100 to 200,000 credits. We have the Minus Iris, which is a very, very nice one that sells for around like 300k. And then we have some gold versions as well. We have some of the gold Sinars. They all have the same design where they have like the pod racers. So basically, it uh, looks like what they look like in Phantom Menace when they were all pod racing and stuff. I guess what sets this one apart is that rather than having the the main part of the vehicle open where you can actually see your character, this time it's enclosed, so you can't actually see your character. So I guess that's what makes it different and unique. Uh, also, the design looks a lot more imperial. But um, yeah, very nice. I, I can see why they decided to make that gold as well. So uh, not bad at all. The next gold armor set is uh, sorry, gold mount is the fierce Thuvasaur. Now this one is kind of just one of those beast mounts. Uh, it's got some very nice armoring, but I wouldn't say the beast looks very cool, uh, very menacing, but um, I can definitely see that being one of those gold mounts that just goes for like 1 million-ish credits. So not really worth opening the pack for. You can probably find a very good deal on the GTN. 
I think things like the Savage Falone or the uh, Psyche, those were all just kind of new beast mounts that were released as gold mounts, but they didn't do too well on the GTN when it came to selling them. So you can find very good deals. That's the good news. I mean, if you are interested in getting this mount, you can find a very good deal probably on the GTN. But um, those are the two gold mounts. Going on to the silver mounts, we'll get the bad one out of the way with first. We have the Aerotech Ivory. Uh, I'm Yeah, I just one of those kind of silvery mounts that no one really cares about i mean if you're a collector of the aerotech series here's another one for you it won't be expensive at all on the gtn but um i'm not too crazy about that one but here's the cool one the inferno devourer now we don't have many devourers in the game the last one was released a long time ago and the last one i believe was silver rarity as well but this one's got that very nice orangey design and just in general it's going to make for a really good affordable mount for like new players or even players who just uh, want one of these things like it's a really really cool mount to have so that's actually pretty awesome to see a silver version of that go live with um with very nice inferno design there all right going on into now the um weapons now we have uh, the inscrutable assault cannon, the inscrutable lightsaber, and the inscrutable dual saber. I'm not gonna spend any time on these because I just don't like Bioware didn't spend any time designing them. So why should we spend any time talking about them? They look so common and basic. And I guess the assault cannon's okay, but uh, no one really cares about assault cannons anymore, honestly. Like only one class can use them, and we have so many amazing designs already that I don't know why they keep coming out with this stuff unless they're gonna make it super cool and out there. The lightsabers just look super generic and they're too small to even really make an impact. No one's going to even be able to see them. So, yeah, not too crazy about those weapons. Uh, the crystal, nothing much to say about there either. It's just a new kind of green crystal. It's definitely not something we already have in game, but um, I wouldn't say it's particularly amazing either. Uh, now the really cool stuff. Here we go. We have the uh, new platinum weapon. So, of course, with this hyper crate, we have the, uh, the tight stuff cylinder as well, but we do have a new platinum weapon. Uh, blaster, which is probably, I think, the first Platinum Blaster to be released in this game. It's the Wentross ER19 Bowcaster. Uh, we haven't had a Bowcaster in this game for a very long time, and this one definitely has some unique aspects to it. You have a really cool scope at the back there, and then you have the animation when you activate it, and it's got this these cool fiery um, flares coming out the side of it. So it's definitely very cool and unique. Uh, when I first saw this data mined, I knew it was going to be Platinum. I think some people were speculating it was actually going to be Silver Rarity because the other bowcaster that's available from the cartel market is Silver Rarity. So this one is kind of just a cooler version of that. I'll show you what that looks like right now on the cartel market just to compare uh, the design. But it definitely has its own unique elements to it that would make it platinum worthy, I guess. But um, I don't think it's going to be one of those really exp expensive platinum items. Like Think about how low the Tithe Lightsaber and the Tithe Lightsaber Pike dropped. On the GTN, you can actually pick, find deals for them for like 35 to 50 million credits, and that's pretty low for a Platinum item. When you can compare it to things like the Unstable uh, Vented Saber, or the Divine Vented Saber, or the Unstable Peacemaker Saber, all of those sell upwards of 100 million credits. So you, this is probably going to be one of those cheaper versions. So once again, the good news is it'll be more affordable. Still very expensive, but more affordable for people that want it. I definitely am going to look into getting this one, because uh, I think it's going to work really well with an Imperial Agent. Uh, so we have a new Platinum uh, weapon there, and then aside from that, let's see what else is um, worth talking about. Oh, here we go. This is probably the best item out of this pack, and one of the best items to be released uh, recently. One of the ones I'm most excited about. We have the Volatile Weapon Tuning, and as you guys might notice here, it's in collections, which means weapon tunings are now available in collections. I'm making a separate video about that, a really short one, because there's some stuff I want to talk about regarding that. But just to examine the item itself here, it is the nicest weapon tuning out here right now. It's basically a lightning weapon tuning on steroids, so it's a little bit more of an unstable version. And as you guys can see, the flares actually shoot out of your weapon and they um, hit the ground and stuff and go everywhere. It's super cool. It doesn't have the same volatile effect as the volatile conquer saber, so don't get it confused with that. It's definitely a, a more of a lightning effect, but it's very cool nonetheless. And here I'll preview it on blaster rifles and stuff. It all looks super cool. So, um... Yeah, definitely going to be a very, very expensive item. Probably, you know, that's going to be better than the platinum stuff you get out here, honestly. Like, it looks so cool. Uh, and um, the lightning weapon tuning in contrast, I'll show you that one uh, that one as well. Um, it's kind of more of a stabilized effect, so it's not quite shooting out. And that has its own um, appeal as well, because not everyone's going to want to have the really unstable thing. Some people just want a more controlled effect. And then some of the other stuff we have in here is like the uh, the fashion check regen, which is just going to be a silver regen. 
uh, the Phantom Rake, well, I'm not sure why it has this glow up effect because when you preview it, it doesn't have that effect. So maybe it's only in dark environments it glows or something. I don't know, not too crazy about the pets. We have the jungle Menka Lynx as well. But here we go, we have a new droid companion, the C8S3C. And the cool thing about this droid companion is it's actually a melee companion. Because I think all the droid companions we have right now uh, shoot as, um, as a ranged companion. So this one's actually pretty cool. It's wielding a um, double-bladed vibrosword. But I think you can even put maybe a double-bladed lightsaber on it. I don't know, maybe. Uh, so that would be pretty cool. Anyways, all in all, guys, a really decent pack. Definitely really excited about the volatile weapon tuning. Uh, to see even what it sells for. I mean, I don't see that dropping at all on the GTN. Uh, right now, weapon tunings, normally when they um, come out of cartel packs, they drop as low as 6 to 10 million credits. But this one, I, I don't see how it can drop that low. And if it does, I mean, that's crazy. Because uh, people are probably going to want big bucks for that one. They know it's super cool. And then we have a new Platinum Blaster, which is um, going to be really cool. The armor sets are on point. So all in all, a really decent pack. Um, I was scared with the new Cartel Pack changes. They were going to reduce the quality of them, but that isn't the case. I mean, the silver stuff is cool. The gold stuff is really on point. Uh, now all they have to do is fix the RNG, and Cartel Packs are pretty decent. Uh, so once again, obviously, when this pack comes out, we'll check the RNG. But uh, before you get all excited, I mean, the pack is coming out June 27th. So there's still quite a lot of time before the pack is released. But... Um, I guess that's more time to maybe get lucky and get one of these out of a chance cube or something. Uh, but anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about these items in the comment section. Are you guys excited about them? What is your favorite one? Uh, mine is definitely the Volatile Tuning, but I mean, are you guys more excited about that cool looking Bowcaster or the Tithing Disciples armor set? Let me know. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.